Welcome to Zoom at Times TV, and here's your host, Anita Finley. Good morning, everyone. So I have our favorite realtor on the Zoom or Times show. Of course, it's Anthony Michael Culp, and he is what we call a senior real estate specialist. And we think he's number one realtor in South Florida because he does help people besides just sell and buy their home, you know, get them sold or, or find buyers. He's really a person that cares and he, he knows so much about construction. So we have a big show today. We're going to talk about uh, what happened in Surfside. We're going to talk about you buying your house or selling it. So, Anthony, thanks for coming on today. Thanks for having me again. You know, I was telling you about this uh, man who has a place for sale and it's in a, I've never been to his house, but it sounds, I think it's about worth about 250 is what he said, 250,000. And I said, well, I hope you know where you're going because you're going to sell it so fast. Two weeks have gone by and no one has even appeared and he has a broker. I tried to get him to use you, but he had a friend. That's always the way it goes. These friend brokers, right? Yeah. <laughs> So you were telling me about what could have happened. Well, a couple of things. One, the first thing that comes to mind is the agent may not have put it in the MLS or it's been entered into the MLS incorrectly. The other thing would be that it's, it's very overpriced. Um, but that's not always such a bad thing. You know, you swing for the fences and uh, you can always lower your price. Uh, if you underprice your home, Somebody could come in and say, okay, I'll give you full price, cash, no contingencies, and I'll settle at your convenience. And pretty much you sold your house because you put a contract in there saying, or you put a contract out there saying, this is what I want for my house. Somebody comes along and says, I'm giving you, I'm giving you exactly what you want. You're, you have an obligation to sell the property to that person. And, uh, you know, in today's market, a lot of agents like to come in and say, oh, well, let's price it at 200 and we'll get multiple offers. And, and the other problem with uh, doing something like that, the person who ends up buying it, who pays 20000 over cash, they get buyer's remorse or they went in at cash, but they're really doing financing. And, and there's a high probability that that person may back out. And now your home has come back on the market. And people will question, well, why did it come back on the market? And no matter what you say, they're going to question, you know, they're, they're, they're not going to take it at 100%. So, Well, that's but, why I always tell people they should really consider the realtor, the person who's going to manage this. And it needs to be so inexperienced. So many people jump into the real estate market. They, you know, they, they don't know very much, but they think they can make a lot of money, you know. That doesn't, it's not beneficial for you as the buyer or the seller. Go with someone like Anthony Colt because he's been doing this for many years. And, and, and so anyway, let me just give you a phone number. So you would call him at 954-815-9048. Um, okay, Anthony. So when I first talked to you, you wanted to talk about the whole condo problem people are having now. Why don't you give us your opinion? Right. I've been in the housing industry for over 42 years. I started out picking up around the job site to uh, being the foreman uh, on building 10,000 square foot plus homes and then having my own company and then becoming a broker and realtor. In my opinion, what happened at Surfside was gross neglect by the condo board by not fixing this problem or maintaining the building property the, properly. The problem right now is you know, people will panic sell. And, you know, it's really, this is like an airplane crash. You know, there's 3 million flights a year and you hear about one crash and everybody's afraid to fly. Don't panic sell. The one thing to make yourself feel better is go to your board, go to your building rep and ask them, how was the last inspection? Is there any issues? Um, can you show me, uh, you know, what the issue was? In my opinion, this column water that had chlorine in it and water that of course had salt in it got inside the column. So the column rotted from the inside out. So all the rebar, which is the strength of the column, they, the concrete is just holding the rebar together. But when all, once all that rebar rotted and expanded, and if you, if you have been watching TV, you saw the cracks and you saw all the rust coming out of the cracks. That's mean that, that means that that rebar has rotted on the inside. 
once that rebar loses all its strength and being that this column was at the very bottom of the building and it lost all its strength, it just collapsed. And, you know, the other thing that they're thinking is at the time the building code wasn't enough for the rebar that was going from a column into the slab. And I, I can't get too technical without drawing everything out, but um, they did not see anything that the rebar that was connecting the slabs, the floors and the ceilings to the columns. But they think that by it not having enough pieces of rebar coming off of the column into the slab, where you would have lost just the one column and would have dropped like that because there wasn't enough rebar when it did when it went down all the rebar was pulled out of the slab so i i think that's what they're going to come up with from the pictures that i've seen between uh you know and also it was the gross neglect uh they they kept pushing this problem off and off and it was you know it, it, it's just horrible that it happened and you know luckily the building when the second part of the building came down it didn't fall onto the building next door. And, um, you know, we'll learn a lot from this. They'll change the building codes. Um, well, I do have a question. So let's say that someone forget, I mean, the, the horror is that there are people who died because of it. That, that, you can't replace that. It's over, it's terrible. And they, those people have lost everything. Their families have lost everything. Now, what happens to someone who did get out? Um, I mean, and the insurance companies and what's going to happen to, let's say they, these places were worth $400,000. What happens to all this now? Well, in this case, they've already, they don't have to make their mortgage payments. They froze their mortgage payments. Um, the building has insurance. The building is covered for all the structural part of the building. Now, hopefully they had good insurance for that. And then you have your insurance for your contents. Uh, and because this is such a national and international uh, incident, you know, these insurance companies are really stepping up that, you know, they don't want, uh, you know, they don't want it to be on the news that this poor family that lost everything and this insurance company isn't working with them. So they are stepping up. The uh, community has stepped up all over the world has stepped up. And, you know, I think the last count was $2 million was raised to help these family members. Um, so, you know, they're, they're lucky about this. And, and just another thing to put it in perspective that you shouldn't panic sell. They have gone and inspected hundreds of buildings along the coast. And there was only one that they, uh, they had the people leave. And they went in, they inspected it. It was electrical. Most of the problem that they asked them to leave the building was electrical. And after a few days, they let them go back into the building. So that just out of the thousands of buildings, you know, that are along the coast. So it just goes to show that this is such a rarity for this to happen. I think they said the last building collapse that happened in Dade County was an FBI building in the 50s or 60s. Some, some you know, it was so far back. So. Well, I'm I've now heard there, there are materials that are better than rebar. And there's a, some people I knew that are making, using some other kind of a, steel or metal or whatever it is. Right. So that may change or even the building codes. Well, the, the building codes do, do change. There's, you know, just the footers for the buildings and other buildings that you see, they have, you know, they usually in areas like ours where it's very sandy, they're going to go down all the way to Carl and they're going to build off the Carl. Now they're even going to test that Carl. Is that Carl strong enough to hold this certain amount of weight, you know, pounds per square inch? And if it's not, then they may, may drill through to Carl and get down to bedrock. Uh, you know, eventually they're going to get down to a hard surface. The other thing, if you take a pencil, your pencil, you take this pencil and you put it in to here and you push down on it, it's going to go down until it gets so far and then it's not going to be able to go anywhere. So that's, that's another way that uh, they would put them in and then they would build a slab on top of that or they would just build on that going up the building. So there's a lot of different ways to build property in South Florida. And you have to remember something. This isn't new. They built the pyramids. The pyramids are still standing. You know, not, you, know, you, know you, you know, castles, look at castles that are over a thousand years old. They're still standing. This technology isn't new. Of course, it's improved since then, 
but um, you know, it's buildings don't just fall down. You see what's going on way before a building is going to fall down. So, um, you know, they're going to increase the uh, uh, shorten the time in inspections. A 40 year inspection will probably become a 20 year inspection. They'll probably have another inspection, you know, um, in five years, well, they'll go through and just do a visual inspection. So just, you know, don't panic sell. Don't think that your building can, is going to come down. Uh, but you can check with your condo board or the management company and ask them, how, when was our last inspection? How was it? Were there any issues? Were those issues uh, taken care of? And if you're a condo board or a management company, you might want to be proactive and have a meeting with everybody who lives there and say, hey, don't worry. You know, here's here's the report from our last inspection and everything is good and you don't have to worry. We're on top of this. So, um, you know, you can, you can quell your fears. You can satisfy yourself that you're living in a safe structure. If you just ask the question. Well, one thing that I've heard now, and I know that you know, this is that the reserve has to be kept up. And a lot of times people don't have the money. And so they keep making it less and less and there isn't enough reserve to do the things that should be done. Right, where they push off a special assessment. In South Florida, right. our older population, especially Canadians, right. have been selling. The newer buyers understand reserves because their mortgage companies are telling them, hey, if your uh, condo is not collecting 10% in reserves, then you have to put 20% down. And that'll make somebody think, well, wait a minute, if the mortgage company doesn't want to invest in this property, uh, you know, maybe I should take a better look at it and, you know, look at their budget and see if they're collecting enough in reserves. And ah. also in your condo meeting, you have the right to ask that. Are we fully funded? Which just quickly, fully funded does not mean that you have all the money to, to do everything. It means that if the roof was just replaced and the roof cost $100,000 to replace and it's going to last 20 years, and so you, you're going to put away the five thousand uh, dollars every year. So in twenty years, the you have all of the money to pay for that roof. Um, that's fully funded. It doesn't mean that the hundred thousand dollars is already sitting in the bank. And that goes with you know there's a life expectancy for everything on on any property, and that goes for the driveways, even the carpeting and the painting, and and you know it goes on and on. So if you're in a building that's fully funded, that's great. So I was so concerned that people aren't going to want to be in condos, tall condos after this happens. So you're saying if everybody does the right thing, it won't matter, even if they're on the ocean, because now they bring up another point with the ocean and the water and it gets underneath there. So and how do you even how can you inspect that? What's a big a big waves are going to come during a hurricane? Who knows what could happen, right? Sign. There's a thing called spalding. And spalding is when a rebar inside the concrete, when it rusts, it swells. And when it swells, it, it cracks the concrete or it'll pop concrete out. So what they do when they to repair that is they'll go in, they'll grind away all of the rust if they can. And if they can't, they'll cut out that piece of rebar, weld in a new piece of rebar, and then concrete over it. And that's concrete restoration. That's what they're doing when you see them on the buildings and they're do, you know, you see for a year, they have tarps and everything on the buildings. That's what they're in there doing. And they're checking the balconies to make sure that, you know, everything is still structurally sound. So, so let's say you have some clients and they want to live on the ocean and they mm -hmm. want to live, you know, in a condo. You as the realtor, I know you rather than most realtors, you're going to tell them about all these things, aren't you? Well, the big thing now with condominiums, everybody you know, wants to know, has this building had its 40 year restoration? And how long ago was it? Now you can do the math. If a building was built in 1976, you know, the 40 year restoration is going to be in the early 2000s. Now it's not always in 40 years. Sometimes cities are behind and they'll get, you know, they'll come to you after 42 years. But if the management company or their condo is being proactive and they're checking on the building, uh, you know, everything should be fine. I I sell a lot of property in Palm Air and, you know, the 40 year restorations here, they've been blowing through these buildings because 
uh, they've been on top of the building. When they get the buildings painted every six years, if they see anything, they fix it. So when it came time to do the 40 year on most of the buildings, they were able to get, get through it very quickly because there wasn't a lot of work to do. Our construction is very different than many high rises also. Most of our interior stru our structure that's holding the building up is in the interior of the building where it doesn't get uh, any weather, you know, it's not getting moisture or salt air or anything like that. The columns that are outside the building are visible by all four sides. So if you see something in, in these buildings, the way they're constructed, it can quickly be fixed. Where sometimes in other buildings, if it's in a parking garage or, you know, when they're just patching the concrete and painting it, uh, you know, it's, it might, every structure is different. Every building is different. So. Wow. Well, big subject. Work. Big subject, Anthony. I think that uh, you, you're so right on all that. And that's, that's great. Well. Tell us what's happening in the real estate market. Is it still as hot? Because I hear about foreclosures coming up. Right. Real estate is crazy right now. We just, There's no inventory. Um, when something does come on the market, if it's, if it's priced just right, it's going to sell within 10 days. Um, it's, you know, I have people, pe a lot of people in South Florida, they're not impulse buyers. They've been, they've been looking at the market for a long time. So a lot of people are getting discouraged because they don't have to buy. It's a luxury for them to buy here. So they're waiting. They're, you know, they're, oh, prices are going to come down. They think we're going to go through what happened in 2008. Well, that's highly unlikely because the, the big difference is in 2008, more people owned multiple homes than ever before. And when things started to go, it perpetuated. Oh, well, my the value of my property went down. So it's not worth me paying the mortgage and I'm going to just short sell it. And, you know, which, you know, that we're, we're just not going to have that problem. Our problem right now is in South Florida, there's nowhere to build. If mm. you're building new homes, then there's, and we have a million people here moving here in the next 10 years. But if you can build homes, then you're adding to that supply of homes. Well, we have more people living here year round. You don't sell your year round residence as much as you do your second home. And, we, we're just at a stalemate. Now, I think when the pandemic starts to slow down and people go back to work and they're called back into work, I think we'll, and they're comfortable with people coming into their home, I think we'll start to see things come back on the market. But they are expecting some foreclosures to start coming on the market as well. Let me just tell you, my guest today, of course, is Anthony Michael Culp. He's a senior real estate specialist. I think he's the number one realtor in South Florida. His huh. phone number, get your pencil out. It's 954-815-9048. Again, 954-815-9048. Well, I did have a question about someone who sold their home was listed at, let's say, 245000 They wound up having a lot of people who came there. Someone bought it for, for $275,000. Um, if it weren't, it happened to be cash, but if it weren't cash, the appraisal might not work. So how does that, how does that happen? What goes on then? Well, either the seller can lower the price, they'll negotiate it, and each of them may, uh, you know, put up money. If, if there was a $30,000 difference, the seller may come down $15,000, and the buyer will come up $15,000 and pay the difference. Or they just part ways. I just lost a, a property because it underappraised. And I told the buyers, I said, you know, the same property has sold for five hundred thousand dollars, and you know, you're you're four sixty and underappraised thirty thousand dollars. I would never tell somebody to to you know move forward with it, and they decided to back off. And then they thought about it and came back the following week and said, no, we're going to move forward with it. It was too late. We had already canceled the contract and they sold it to somebody else. So. Oh, wait a minute. So let's say the appraisal came in at that 275. If they paid the difference of what the appraisal, I'm sorry, the appraisal came in and that didn't come in at 275. If they paid the other in cash, it would be okay, right? Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thanks fine with that. Yeah. Right. So it's just if they're looking for a mortgage and it's not going to appraise. Right. But the appraisals are interesting now that they see what's happened in the, in, in, you know, in the market. Why wouldn't the appraisal go up? Well, is that based on that? 
if somebody is buying the same property for cash and they're buying it for a higher amount, then there's no problem. It, it will appraise. But right. property values are going up so fast. You know, in, oh. in, in one year, I think we've seen 20%. Now, a lot of people who've had their house on the market for a long time, why isn't my house selling? Prices have gone up 20%. Because you're thirty percent above what the market value was when you listed it. I see. So, and I have a listing yeah. like that. It's been on for over a year, and the seller said, "This is what I want," and the market has come up to his price. Now we're getting offers. So. And so, you think he'll sell it now? Yeah, I think it'll sell in the next sixty days. I, I there's an agent that's calling me back today that I think he might be putting an offer in. Right. Hmm. It is amazing, isn't it? This is a, as you've been in the real estate business for a long, long time, have you ever seen this happen before? Well, in the early 2000s, uh, you know, it was like this. People were coming in, mostly financing, because financing at the time, the rates were so low like they are now. They were also doing a lot of no-doc loans, so they really weren't paying attention to people's um, debt ratio. And for the people, you know, people out there who haven't gotten a loan lo in a long time, your debt ratio is, if you're making $100,000 a year, but you owe $40,000 in bills and mortgages and car payments and stuff like that, that means your debt ratio is high. Most banks don't want to see it that high. They want to see it, you know, around 28%, some, you know, somewhere around there where they feel more comfortable. But, you know, the loans, you know, we were getting loans approved within 10 days. <laughs> it, in the early 2000s, I would call the appraiser. So we would get the contract, I'd call the appraiser right away. Well, they don't do that anymore. The bank, there's uh, companies that uh, the bank calls the company, the company will then send it out to several appraisal companies. And then one of those appraisal companies will come, then come and do the appraisals. So I can't order an appraiser anymore. So, oh, and at that time, yeah, at that time, appraisers knew if they didn't make it appraised, it, I wasn't going to call them anymore. I would call the next appraiser. And at the time, I was a listing agent for developments. I had hundreds of, of condos to sell. So they were always, you know, and then somebody would buy cash. And once somebody bought cash, then everything would appraise. Okay, but I guess what I wanted to ask is, did we ever have a market like this where uh, there was a shortage of places to live and the rates went up crazy? Have you ever seen this happen? You know, when I first started in the early 80s, houses were still selling and there were interest rates as high as 20% on homes. Um, you know, buying a home is no longer buying a home and spending the rest of your life there. Um, if somebody spends 10 years in a home, that's a pretty long time now. You know, a lot of people are buying their first home or, you know, then they're moving up to the next one. Then I have to have the next one. And, you know, eventually you get to the point where you bought too much house and then you want to sell it. And, uh, you know, in the early 2000s, houses went from like an average of 1,500 square feet to, you know, 2,400 square feet. I see. And, you know, there were houses selling where I lived in Delaware that were, you know, 5,000 square feet. Well, it was a empty nester living there. And once they found out their heating bill was a thousand dollars a month, you know, and, and all these bedrooms were sitting empty, right? They all tried to sell them, but they all came on the market at the same time, so it really brought down the values. And uh, so you only own a big house once. <laughs> once you own too much <laughs> house, true. you can't wait to sell it. And that's true. <laughs> well, Anthony, looks like we've talked uh, through this uh, 30 minutes. I mean, it's been great. You're that you're a rare person that I could ever ask all these questions and know I'm going to get the right answers. And, and my final question to you is so that we don't run out of time. Do you still want to be a real estate broker? <laughs> yeah, I've been, you know, I've been doing this so long. The problem, and I'm a very high volume realtor. So that makes it very stressful. And uh, it's, you know, I created my own monster. Now I have to feed the monster. <laughs> and, you know, I'm 56 now and probably five or six years, I'll start to slow down a little bit. I hope to <laughs> Never. You'll figure something else out. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's wonderful talking to you, Anthony. I always look forward to it. 
I learned so much from you. You you are really a star in this business. So have a very good month and we'll talk again. Thank you. It was nice being Bye, here. Bye, everybody. We'll be back. Bye-bye.